little airbrushed beauty. <gasps> what? Oh no, it's a quake! Hey, I can't get up! Ah! What is going on here? Ah! Casey, did you hear something? I'm such a lucky girl in love. It's not something you see every day. What was and what will be start here with the words, In the beginning there was Howard the Duck. Jimmy, do you like to see what I see? A talking duck? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I've been doing too much toot. I think George Lucas was the one doing all the toot. And a master of quack fool. I'm sorry, but I'm drawing the line at duck johnnies. And while I'm at it, why did they give that female duck human boobs? I mean, someone had to make those. Had to come home to their wife. Like, oh, what'd you do today, sweetheart? I mean, he has a flashback of George Lucas just leaning over him, like bigger, rounder, more perky. Naturally, a movie filled with such good old fashioned family fun should be given its own video game. Wouldn't you agree? Here's Howard the Duck, Adventure on Volcano Island for the Commodore 64. Yep, they actually made a game of this. Adventure on Volcano Island I guess takes place after the movie because you've got to go and save Beverly and I want to say Ian. You know, those two classic characters from the movie. Move over Han and Chewie, make way for Beverly and Clive. They've been taken prisoner by a dark overlord in an active volcano and it's up to Howard and his quack foo to save them. And that's all the information I can give you. They couldn't even be bothered to give the dark overlord a name. So fine, if I meet him, I shall address him as Aubrey. Aubrey the Dark Overlord. Better give myself a suitable name for this adventure. There we go. The game starts out with Howard parachuting down to the island with this I want to eat your organs expression. And in under a minute, I'm already wondering what the fuck it is I have to do. I can't walk over or jump over this sandy stuff. Nor can I quack through it. I guess I'll just go the other way then. There's no music, just the obnoxious sounds Howard the fuck makes. His jump sounds pretty classic, but he's walking great on the ears after a while. And God forbid you walk into anything. Sounds like one of those elastic band toilet roll guitars we used to make as kids. Fucking awful. I reach the end of the path where Howard reminds me he can't swim, which is a joke from the movie. Wait, wait, I can't swim! What? See, it's funny because ducks do indeed, in fact, swim. Hilarious. Now I'm completely fucking stumped, which means it's manual time. And I quote, after walking Howard around for a bit, you'll discover there's nowhere to go. Brilliant, got it, good, I'm there, excellent. It then informs me that this stuff is actually mutant slime, and to jump over it, I'll need to take a three to five step run up. Let's give it a go. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Think about it every night and day. Spread my On the other side of the mutant slime is where you'll find the jetpack you need to cross the river. You know when you're at a party or something and you have that sudden realisation that you're going to throw up and you do that mad dash to the bathroom? That's the music that's playing in your head. Then, out of nowhere, a small, bald, sand vampire pops up out of a hole and starts humping you. 
I mean, what else can it be? That's got to be a leftover sprite that they just threw in there. It makes no sense. A tropical beach has got to be the absolute worst place for vampires. The only other place I can think that's worse is the fucking sun. What's weird is two vampires don't seem to damage you at all. It's hard to know for sure because there's no health bar anywhere, but I let them attack me for ages and nothing happened. Three sand vampires will eventually kill you though. I'm not quite sure what that third one does to Howard, but it must be pretty fucked up. Two deaths and it's back to the start. But what annoys me more than anything is how slow Howard walks. I can only hope that he's never sent to save me. The only two friends that he has in the world are being held prisoner in an active volcano by Aubrey the Dark Overlord and Howard's walking like he's popping down the shops for a fresh packet of Johnny's. The whole stage is pretty monotonous, but if you stick with it you'll eventually reach the bridge, which as far as I'm concerned is the hardest part of the game. See, because Howard moves so slow, it's near impossible to dodge the boulders. One hit and you're dead. And when you finally manage to make it across, vampires start spawning, stopping you from going any further, almost guaranteeing you're going to get killed by a boulder. Okay, dodge that one. Good. What? Is that going to hit me? Phew. Okay, here we go. Oh, fuck! This bridge is a sick joke. I've just read the manual and it says there's only two stages, so you bet they made it this impossible on purpose to stop us completing it in five minutes. Crafty bastards. But if you do manage to make it across and jump on the mound, all hell breaks loose. You immediately spawn in the little glider thing from the movie, which you can't take control of until you reach the star of the level. At first you'll think something's broken, but this is actually how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to fly all the way back to the bridge and over the top of the volcano. And when I say fly, I mean clumsily jerk around pixel by pixel, hoping that the glider will let you go the way you want, which most of the time it doesn't. I mean, I'm flying. Shouldn't I be able to fly over the fucking trees? And that sound! I made it back to the top of the volcano thinking it was loading the second level, when to my surprise the game just ended. It gave me a medal and that was it. Then I consulted the manual again and realised that you need to play on advanced or expert to reach the end of the game. Have you ever heard of a video game not letting you complete it because you picked an easier difficulty? What a load of bollocks! Just out of curiosity, I tried Expert first. It took me 10 minutes to get the jetpack because the jump just doesn't work anymore. Howard, for no reason, doesn't jump far enough and keeps sliding back on the mutant slime. What's Expert about this? And the first mound of vampires raped me to death. So advanced it is. Advanced mode is basically the exact same as intermediate, except that the bridge is way fucking harder. I finally get the glider to the top of the volcano and pray it takes me to the second and final stage. Whoa! Howard's not fucking around. Duck's pulled out an RPG. A Dark Overlord's greatest weakness. You have to walk across this bridge as stalactites fall making holes. Slightly touch a random part around the hole and you get teleported back to the start of the bridge. Plus, every now and then the volcano likes to shake making it harder for you to manoeuvre around the holes. Ha <laughs> ha! Dark Overlord Aubrey, we meet at last! ERPG, you button moon looking freak! Did I do it? I think, I think I did it. Guess I better turn off the volcano. Is that how they work? So Howard just walks off screen and we get the same ugly medal screen from the easier difficulties. Howard looks as high as a drone on that medal. We didn't even get to see Howard rescue Beverly and Rick, which was the whole point of the game, was it not? All that fucking effort for a stoned off his duck tits duck on a medal. Well, I'm glad that's over with. Next time I'll be looking into... Oh no! This a I can fly I believe I can touch the sky